Strap yourselves in, guys. We're going deep. People have been arguing over what God is since the dawn of time. Some people believe God is some bearded dude in the sky who judges you for masturbating and others believe there is no God at all, which is just as insane in my opinion. So I'm not going to participate in tomfoolery by trying to explain the inner nature of God. It's like, how am I supposed to know? It's unknowable. The purpose of this video is to explore the divine paradox, how it applies to us and sharing potential spiritual traps that many fall into, including myself. So even though I don't want to fall into the trap of trying to define something that's undefinable. For the sake of this video, let's refer to God as the never-changing substantial reality that underlies everything we know in this universe. There are many names for it. God, Source, Absolute Infinity, The Creator, The Programmer, Infinite Love, Divine Intelligence. God, or what the Hermetists named the All, is by its very essence unknowable. However, there are certain truths connected with its characteristics manifested within existence as far as the human mind can grasp. Firstly, the All must be all that really is. There can be nothing existing outside the all or else the all will not be the all. Two, the all must be infinite, no beginning and no end. For there is nothing else to define, confine, bound, limit, restrict the all. Three, the all must be immutable, constant, never changing. It cannot be added to nor subtracted from, increased or diminished. It must have always been and must always remain. And four, the all is law itself from which all laws emerge. Nothing but the all can escape law, period, at least without negative consequence. So even though God and his intentions cannot be known by humankind, what can be known are the natural laws that construct this very existence. And these natural laws are universal and immutable, meaning that they have always been true and will always remain true whether your perceptions align with it or not. So do not mistake natural law for religious doctrine. If they're not true 100% of the time, then it's not a law. The Hermetists believe all theories, guesses and speculations regarding the all is but the childish efforts of mortal minds trying to grasp the infinite. This pursuit has always failed and will always fail just from the very nature of the task. Those who pursue this rabbit hole end up traveling around and around in the labyrinth of thought, kind of like a hamster which frantically runs in its hamster wheel, traveling forever and yet reaching nowhere, just to be standing where he started. This is a common mistake when people try and seek the existence of God within existence itself. But how can the universe be created by the all if the all is infinite and cannot add nor subtract a portion of itself since there is nothing new outside the all? Well, similar to how you create a universe of your own in your mentality, so does the all create universes in its own mentality. As the first hermetic axiom states, all is mind. When we create, we don't use outside materials, nor do we take away a portion of ourselves, yet our spirit pervades our mental creation. Think of famous comic book creations such as the Marvel Universe created by Stan Lee. The Marvel Universe along with everything in it, including all superheroes and villains, are mental creations of his mind. These characters may be imaginary from our perspective, but they symbolically reflect human nature. And to the characters in the story, the world is very real and kind of takes a life of its own, but still bounded by the laws of that particular existence. It's not like when you draw a cartoon character that suddenly jumps out of the page into the third dimension, right? Now imagine Spider-Man going around trying to find his creator within the Marvel Universe. It's safe to say that he will be chasing his tail until the end of time. Stan Lee as we know him doesn't exist in the Marvel Universe. Spider-Man may be able to find a glitch in the Matrix or an Easter egg or even go on some crazy psychedelic journey where he communicates with his version of Stan Lee, but no matter what, he cannot be Stan Lee. Each character has a divine piece of his essence which underlies all of reality within the Marvel Universe, but they are not him per se. Enough said. Anytime you need inspiration, I'll be right here. And this kind of points out the absurdity of people arrogantly claiming I am God. Just imagine Spider-Man announcing I am Stan Lee or Harry Potter saying I am JK Rowling. It sounds kind of ridiculous right? Especially because they're claiming to be something that's completely outside their capacity to understand. Now of course this analogy is inadequately incomplete since it represents the mental images of the finite mind which our minds can grasp while the universe is a creation of infinite mind which is unknowable. However it's all a matter of degree in which the same principles operate. In this case it's the principle of correspondence, as above so below, since our universe is fractal by nature. And remember that recognizing principles and trying to understand the creator of those principles are two completely different things. So while the all is above all natural laws, we are bounded by it.
The all is in the earthworm, but the earthworm is far from being the all. As many of us know, the universe is full of infinite paradoxes and contradictions, but the masses have learned to recognize and reconcile paradoxes by understanding both sides of polarity, the relative and the absolute. Absolute truth is things as the mind of God knows them, while relative truth is things as the highest reason of humans understand them. And like everything in life, it is and it isn't. Same, but different. It all just depends on which viewpoint you are looking from, so beware of half-truths. From the absolute perspective, compared to the all, the ever-changing transient universe which has a beginning and end must be unreal and illusory, a mere fleeting dream made up of controlled hallucinations. However, to the finite minds which make up this relative human experience, the universe is very real and must be treated as such. Just because you acknowledge the absolute view, it does not give you a magic pass to be immune to all natural law and phenomena of the universe. Because just remember, you are not God, you are of God. The universe and everything in it is an expression of the all, and whilst we can have a perceived experience of unifying with God during certain states of consciousness, this does not mean that you are the big dog himself. Just like fingernail clippings are an expression of the human organism, it doesn't mean that it is the organism itself. Let's briefly look at an example of the law of polarity by exploring the concept of hot and cold. The words hot and cold may be made up human constructs, but they point to very real, verifiable aspects of reality. From the absolute perspective, a boiling pot of water in a human hand is just pure energy and there is no separation since we are all one. Everything is the all since there can be nothing outside the all, so the duality of hot and cold doesn't actually exist from this point of view. It's all just heat energy and lack thereof. However, if I put my hand in a boiling pot of water, it will probably cause severe pain and potentially damage my nerve endings. That's real. That's a fact. You may be able to gain super monk powers and detach yourself from your body, but the fact of burning decaying flesh still remains. You can say you're God all you want and that this reality is an illusion, but you will burn your hand if you place it in boiling water. And if you subscribe to this polarized absolutist approach and act, live and think of this universe as a mere dream, then that's exactly what life is going to be. And like a sleepwalker, you will drift through reality, walking around in circles, making no progress, until you are inevitably forced into a rude awakening by falling and bleeding over the natural laws which you ignored. Or as it states in the Kabbalion, they are broken against the rocks and torn asunder by the elements by reason of their folly. Even though your true nature is a divine expression of the all, you are still bound to a physical body. So it may be wise to humble yourself and learn to recognize how these laws operate instead of thinking you're above them. Otherwise, life will eventually hyper slap you back to earth, no matter how wise and enlightened you may be. Perhaps children of God, or God with a lowercase g, since we are creators of our own reality, but you are far from being the all, at least during this lifetime. The very fact that you are having a relative experience implies that you cannot be the all, since it's formless, yet it's still inside you. That's the divine paradox. So why am I so caught up with semantics? Why does it matter if you're God or if you're of God? Aren't these all just dualistic concepts that are an invention of the human mind? It's an important distinction to make because if you confuse being of something with being the thing itself, it can be very easy to fall into egoic traps. And this is a common problem when the ego has mystical experiences and gets involved into spirituality. While certain experiences can feel extremely real and give you glimpses of truth, many times people completely misinterpret them. And it's not their fault, I've been guilty of this as well as many others. The very nature of the ego wants to understand and identify with everything, and it's especially sneaky with using spiritual practices for its own agenda, which is known as spiritual materialism. Let me, a mortal man with a limited mind, tell you what God, the unknowable, really means. Yeah, not exactly the most humble approach. In my opinion, this is the height of spiritual ego. I mean, what could be a more egocentric statement than claiming you are God? Anytime someone thinks they've figured it all out, they have committed a great error. Which is ironic because many of these New Age teachers criticize material scientists for clinging onto the relative while they're doing exactly the same thing with the absolute. This is spiritual fundamentalism and polarized thinking disguised as non-duality. True non-duality isn't about claiming godhood and dismissing individuality, like it's something that needs to be dissolved. This false notion of needing to transcend and overcome duality is based on a hypocritical premise which is rooted in self-denial. Let's not forget that duality is essential for creation and is in fact very sacred. So while this pre-Advaitic model of non-duality may seem convincing at first, this perspective lacks imagination and the necessary self-knowledge. We are committing a great error when we attempt to deny the existence of reality in the relative aspect. We may deny its mastery over us, as we all should, but it's not wise to ignore it completely. Some of these teachers will even go as far as saying that the only true way to understand and experience God is by smoking a psychedelic toad secretion. 
But the issue with this line of thinking is that this quote unquote God experience is still filtered through a subjective mind which gets interpreted differently depending on the individual. One of the ways in which potent psychedelics work is by hijacking your nervous system and amplifying your state of awareness and ego, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, it really just depends on how you interpret and integrate the experience. Our bodies unchanged, yet our minds have lived a thousand lifetimes. He hadn't decided he was still going to kill us. He was talking himself into it, I've seen it before. Cosmic apotheosis wears off faster than salvia. And while speeding up your spiritual progress may seem appealing at first, if you're not ready, it will be like getting thrown in the deep end without knowing how to swim. Your ego will attach all sorts of potentially incorrect meaning to the experiences you have based on your belief systems. And the question we could ask ourselves is, does the experience of self-realization give rise to a non-dual understanding, or is it the other way around? That a non-dual concept of reality conditions the very nature and experience of self-realization. This is why people have different interpretations of these experiences depending on the culture. Let's not forget that the inner world is totally incomprehensible to human intelligence. So what people translate as an experience of non-duality or oneness could very easily be a trance-like state of the mind which cannot grasp the nature of these altered states of consciousness. That's it, I'm getting out of here. I'm not necessarily denying that you can have a glimpse of being one with God, but you must ask yourself the question, what is this God relative to? After all, you are still a worm in comparison to the all, since your understanding of the all will always be limited to your state of consciousness. Just like a dog will not be able to understand the mathematical structure of nature to the same degree as a human, a human will not be able to understand reality to the same degree as a high dimensional being, let alone God who has created infinite dimensions of reality that would cause our puny minds to explode. Could you imagine if 5-MeO-DMT was some frog deity that tricks humans into thinking they're gods? <laughs> silly humans. Which kind of sounds familiar to the snake deceit Eve to eat from the tree of knowledge and telling her, ye shall be as gods. Now, of course, I'm not saying this is the case per se, no one really knows, I'm just making up a silly example here. But I don't think it's too far-fetched to recognize that there is a lot of deception in reality in our perception of it. I mean, how many times have we enthusiastically bought into an ideology because we were totally convinced at the time, but then we ended up getting completely disillusioned as time went on? Man, life can be a rough road full of trial and error, which is exactly why you must stay vigilant and have your wits about you, especially about what teachings you follow. And please forgive my skeptical mind by asking, what benefit would I get for believing that I am God? After all, you must take into consideration the many ego mechanisms that operate within our minds such as confirmation bias and cognitive dissonance. So first of all, believing this would remove all responsibility since reality is just a meaningless hallucination and I get to make up my own morals without suffering any consequences. You know, since it's just a human construct and I'm not really human. I'm God. Plus, I don't have to deal with the harshness of reality nor the suffering in it since it's all an illusion. Win-win, right? See, I don't know about that. I think this really comes down to the nature of ego mind wanting to know everything, even the unknowable, and it will go to extreme lengths and jump to conclusions to get its answers. In every single era in which humanity has ever existed, there's always been someone or some group who thinks they've figured life out. Alright boys, gather around. Uh, I think I found the secrets of the universe. That's what you said last time, Mark. And then a few decades would pass and the same thing would happen. Oh, boy. So I've got a bit of a confession to make. Uh, I might have been a bit wrong on the whole God thing. Fuck this, Mark. Yeah, nah, but this time, 100% certainty. For reals, for reals. I know what God is. Can you see how this fool's errand of trying to understand God never ends just by the very nature of the task? I'm sorry to break it to you guys, but no one knows in contrast to the all. I mean, by all means, gaze up at the stars and wonder, but watch your footsteps, otherwise you'll trip over. And let's get this straight. I'm not saying this to devalue profound psychedelic trips. They have personally changed my my life beyond imagination in terms of healing and understanding myself, which I am forever grateful for and I will continue to be in awe just at the very existence of these tools. But it's when people start projecting their ego into it and claim they understand God because they took drugs when you start stepping in very sticky waters and can lead you down a slippery slope into developing solipsism syndrome and derealization. And unfortunately I am speaking from experience here. Psychedelics can be useful in the awakening stages but they will never help you reach full actualization. I mean have you ever in your life met an enlightened tripper before? And while there are legit enlightened masters like the Christs and the Buddhas in the world, there are far more charlatans out there with perverted views on enlightenment. And the more dirt you have on your camera lens, the more distorted the picture is going to be. And this is exactly why I don't often speak about enlightenment, because I'm not enlightened. I may have had profound mystical and enlightening experiences and had glimpses of the absolute, but that doesn't mean that I'm enlightened. I have a long way to go, as these kind of experiences take many years to embody. Thank you. 
this is the divine reality in many ways. After all, it's only in the relative plane where things actually happen, literally. This is where the divine gift of consciousness expresses itself in infinite degrees and where everything comes together, which is a freaking miracle to witness. We are inevitably lucky to be here and even have this experience at all. It's the separateness of reality that's illusory, not life itself. And if everything's God, then shouldn't you treat this reality as a divine gift instead of denying it? Wouldn't that be denying God? Why don't I get the feeling that if this reality was 100% blissful and free of suffering, that life being a meaningless illusion would never arise in a human's mind. It took a lot to break down these paradigms and acknowledge certain harsh truths of reality. So I don't mean to sound righteous or derogatory, as I can only speak from experience. Like, I get it. It can be a massive burden living in a transient reality and all the human suffering that comes along with it. And some people get dealt very unfortunate cards. There is an unfathomable amount of deep pain and suffering on this planet, which happens on a daily basis, and it's tragic. If you were to tap into just a glimpse of the collective suffering of humanity and how infinitely deep it goes, you will be horrified and probably scarred for life. It may not be real to you, but it has very real consequences for humanity, since we are all connected and basically one big organism. But don't get me wrong, this reality is a mind-blowing divine gift in every sense of the word when you tap into your true nature, but I wish my loved ones didn't have to die. I wish I wasn't in a decaying meat vehicle in this insanely messed up society. I wish people weren't committing suicide every day. I wish child trafficking wasn't real. And you may say I'm just projecting my judgment into it because I don't know what God's plans are or why there is so much suffering in the world and you would be right, it's not my place. But that's the thing, I'm human. How can you blame me for being upset about these things? And I think this is an important key that's missing from many of these quote unquote spiritual teachings. And that is sincerity and genuine compassion for our brothers and sisters who are suffering. But it's all real, it's all happening. And whether you like it or not, your actions does have a massive effect on humanity. And while we should all ultimately aim for unifying with God and not dwelling in our human problems too much, we must also acknowledge and honor the stage we're at. I highly doubt we're gonna get from war, famine, and slavery, which is where we're still at today, to instant enlightenment and godhood and slip into a reality where darkness doesn't exist and it's all light and bliss, I think that may be a bit idealistic. Who knows, maybe one day in the future when we evolve into higher dimensional beings where duality doesn't exist and we become closer to the all, we can get away with not doing anything but just meditating and dancing in the Garden of Eden. But right now we are in a third dimensional earth plane where shit is going down and a lot of real human beings are suffering here. And when you preach new age ideology and promote inaction and pseudo-spirituality, you are ultimately contributing to more ignorance which leads to more suffering. I don't think our job in the universe is to deny its existence, but to live and do the best that we can under the circumstances that rises from each day. This whole cosmic school which we call Earth is all about growing, learning and expanding your awareness and using this to serve this giant organism we call humanity. If there was no purpose to all of this, then we wouldn't be here with the innate drive to grow and expand. Meaning is scattered everywhere in the universe. It's up to you whether or not you want to recognize it, to see God within all, and even more importantly, to serve God and spread light and knowledge onto this dark world that has forgotten Gotten its divinity. Selflessness is not about becoming enlightened so you can ignore the sufferings of the world. Selflessness is about having perspective, and the only way to have true perspective is through love. Love is unification and God is the ultimate unifier. The whole purpose of spiritual development is really about the recognition, realization and manifestation of the spirit within us, our true nature. This is about returning home to the kingdom of heaven within. Back to God.